I painted a pretty vibrant picture for them th this morning. And uh, we all know where we are, but we all know where we can go and what we can become as a football team. Well, all of Jacksonville has been painting a pretty vibrant picture for the Jacksonville Jaguars here on a Monday. Uh, I think that's pretty safe to say. Yeah. It's a miserable Monday in Jacksonville. That one stung and certainly not what anybody expected. Welcome to Sneakers in Jack's Beach. We do the show anyway, and we do it for an hour. Jags Report Live, live on Fox 30. Brent Martin along with Dan Hicken. And, hey, you can close your eyes for the next few minutes if you want, but there were too many mistakes on well, Sunday. And I can get a bit negative at times at oh, the no, moment. Oh, no, really? But... <laughs> Look at it this way. In all honesty, the Jags are one and two. Nobody expected them to be one and two. But hang on a second. Last year, the 49ers were one and two. They won 13 games. Last year, the Bengals were one and two. They made the playoffs. Last year, the Seahawks were one and two. They made the playoffs. So there is so much football left to be played. I know that's hard to imagine after watching what we watched yesterday, but a lot of work to do and a chance to get better over these next 14 games. Wow, I did not expect ah, that, Dan Hicken. Thank you today. very much. How about that? That. Thank you. How about that? You Thank can do sunshine and rainbows today coming That's what up I'm here for. in a little bit. All right, I'll be the bad guy. Let's take a look at all the mistakes because there are a bunch of them. Yeah. We're going to go right down the list. And I think the game changes right here. Calvin Ridley drops the touchdown pass, yeah. Dan, and you start to kind of second guess yourself if you're the Jags. Wait a minute. Why are all these things going wrong? Yeah, and he didn't have a great game, obviously, and, and really has struggled a little bit since his since his first half of the game against the Colts. So he's got to be play better. And then, you know what, when you decide to kick, you got to make the kick. And, you know, you know, it's a tough life for kickers, but uh, we missed one. And then we had one blocked, didn't we, Brent? Yeah, and after that, this one may be even bigger and just can't kind of build on the problems, right? Uh, again, now it's like, what's going to go wrong? Will Anderson came through pretty clean, blocked it, wasn't returned for a touchdown. But again, I think it's important to note this was re eventually led to a touchdown. That's a 10-point swing yeah. in the football game. Ah, there's mistakes galore, and then, you know, you can't turn the ball over. We all know that. They all know that. And then the Jags are making a move. They're making some plays. Ball pops out. Ball's recovered. And, oh, boy, here they go again. Then they go down and get three points. And how about the defense? The defense, which has been good the first couple of games, not its best game against the rookie quarterback. This on third and three, miscommunication, blowing assignment, and a beautiful throw. Hey, hats off to C.J. Stroud. I thought he played a really good football game, and he might be someone to contend with for a long time now in the AFC South. It's time for the Game Plan, sponsored by EverBank. Advantage you. Make the most of your money at everbank.com slash Jaguars. It's a simple game, you know, when you do things right. You know, you overcomplicate things when you, um, you know, put yourself in positions that you don't practice, things that we don't coach and then don't communicate. It, it makes things like yesterday happen. You know, we have chances and we miss them, and, and then we let that dictate the rest of the game of, oh, no, things aren't going our way, you know, and that's adversity. That's football, you know. Bad plays happen, bad things happen. And yesterday I felt like we, you know, we didn't come together when those things happened. Uh, you know, we kind of, we lost our momentum and, and, you know, it needs to change, it needs to be different. Well, it's time to lift these guys up around here. You just mentioned the good news. There's a lot of football still ahead yeah. for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And here's our guy, a staple on the show the last couple of years. Jags Report Live. Say hello to Jamal Agnew. And, hey, man, tough couple of weeks, tough day. Yeah. We get it. You've been around this league for a long time. Doug said uh, he, he, he put it vibrantly to you guys this morning. Uh, what's the mood like in that building? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, dropping two in a row at home, obviously, that was a division game. But, I mean, we didn't play well at all. And, I mean, we're better than that. We know we're better than that. And that's the most frustrating part is we're so much better than what we're putting on tape right now. And I think Coach Peterson said it, the, the, the film doesn't lie. And we don't look like a good team right now. But we know we believe we're a good team. And we know we're a good team. But we just got to go out there and play. First off, uh, thank you for coming in. You, you, drew, you drew the short stick or short straw, so oh, somebody's got to answer. We're glad you're here, yeah. and so thank you very much for that. Listen, it was stunning for us watching this game. It had to be stunning even more so for you as this game unfolded. I mean, listen, I know in the NFL on any given Sunday, you know that, we all know that, but this was set up for a bounce back win and it just something is not there can you put your finger on anything or did it just snowball what what are your thoughts i think it was just it was just not executing you know obviously offense defense and special teams 
and then also making critical errors in yeah. critical moments. Like for my for myself, like putting turning the ball over, you know, right before halftime, you know, we might have had a touchdown going. You know, the momentum would have been a lot different going into halftime. So it's just like we got to go out there and play and, and play as three units in unison. And I feel like we didn't do that yesterday. Um, you know, obviously we started making a little run coming back mm -hmm. and then that kick return happened and that kind of just drained the energy on the sideline. Um, and I, I, I just think I just think we got to we're a tight. We're a really tight group. Right. And I feel like the vibe in the locker room wasn't any panic. It was just like everybody checking up on each other. Like you good. Like because we all took this pretty hard. I wonder, though, if you get because you guys were so good last year at coming back. Yeah. You know, and it, it, if maybe subconsciously there's that slow start in there. I don't know, but you don't come back from 17 down in the NFL very much. You did it all year last year in the second half. Every week you would come back. It was yeah. incredible. It was the most incredible run I've ever seen in watching the Jaguars. But I wonder going forward if, if there's a little bit of subconscious slow starts there. Well, we're okay because we can come back. And... Well, we saw yesterday one bad mistake, and yeah. that's what happens when you're that far. Because it looked like you were going to come back and get the win. I mean, we obviously went to the locker room like we've been here before. Yeah. Obviously, we're not trying to put ourselves in those situations. Sure. And, but we just weren't panicking. Like, we've been there before. You know, Doug was obviously heated, and he should have been. We weren't executing on either side of the ball. And, I mean, we came into the year this year saying we don't want to put ourselves in those positions. Let's start fast. And we just haven't done that yet. Um, and that's everybody. Mm -hmm. The identity of this football team is supposed to be the offense. We built it all off season. You guys know you have good players. And right now it's just out of sync a little bit. And that's probably feeding into the last couple of weeks from an execution standpoint. But also the surprise part of it. I mean, you guys looked good in August. Yeah. Had a good final preseason game against Miami. And just not making enough plays. I mean, is that yeah. as simple as it gets? I think it just comes down to execution and just doing what we do and being who we are. And not, you know, going looking for plays and just taking what the defense gives us. I mean, not turning the ball over. I've turned myself. I've turned the ball over two times in the last two games. And that's that's something I pride myself on. That's not me. And, you know, that's stuff we got to clean up. And that's me included, obviously. But just executing in the critical moments, third downs, second downs, a pre-snap penalty on first or second down kills yeah. us. So it's just. Stuff like that that killed the momentum of our drives. We just got to clean those up. Let me ask you about the back-to-back -back weeks. I mean, this, is this like a hitter in a slump? I mean, is this uh, what's going to happen next? What's your mentality right now? I, I can't imagine you've been through a stretch like this where you've lost the football really going back to the last year three mm -hmm. times out of the last four games. Yeah, it's just staying confident. I mean, I didn't lose any confidence. I know what I'm capable of. Um, and those are just mistakes that are easily clean up a ball like tucking the ball in traffic, looking the ball in on a little swing route. Like, that's, that's nothing physical or anything. That's just mental cleaning up the little things. One, one quick question for me. I know you guys have speed at wide receiver. And I feel like, and again, just watching, don't know the X's and O's part of it, don't know the reasons why, but I just feel like we got to take more shots. You can run. Ridley can run. Uh, when Zay's in there, he can run. I mean, we've, we know the 40 times. Where's the deep ball been, and is it part of it because we're not protecting that well? Is that a reason so we got to have the shorter passing game? I know we're built on the short passing game. I know we get it out quick, but, man, we are not getting the ball down the field on, on deep passes, taking I mean, shots. Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody wants to see the ball thrown 50 yeah. yards down the field. Yeah. I mean, we want to see that too, but yeah. that's not everything that the defense dic dictates to us. I right. mean, obviously we love to run the ball, but, I mean, if you watch the film, a lot of teams – been dropping in the zone on us because they know we have a, a dangerous passing attack. So we kind of just, our offense is built off, built off taking what the defense gives us and running the ball efficiently. I want to ask you about Trevor a little bit because I come out of the yesterday's game and I'm like, I don't think Trevor played poorly. I oh. Last week as well, I, I, I don't want to say it's everybody else's fault but Trevor. I, I, I get it. It's everybody's fault. But what's, what's the view of how Trevor Lawrence is playing right now internally? I think Trevor is a tremendous leader. Um, I mean, he's got a lot on his shoulders. He's got a lot of pressure on him, um, and he's handled it super well. And he's obviously he's been playing really well. And I don't feel like anybody should be blaming any of the struggles we have on Trevor Lawrence because he he's got so much on his plates. It's just that we got to make the plays around him to take the pressure off of him, um, myself included. Like I put myself in that first and foremost, like making plays on offense when I'm given opportunities, not turning the ball over, making plays on special teams, giving the offense momentum putting us in good field position. So it's everybody. It's not just yeah. 
you can't just put it on the quarterback. I feel he's been playing his he's been playing his butt off. Uh, well, he got some help from his former Clemson teammate on Sunday. Power play of the week, sponsored by IBEW Local 177, powering Jacksonville since 1912. Dan, I thought this was the best part of Sunday. They got ETN more involved. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the National Football League, and they've got to give him the ball, and they certainly did that to kind of get back in the football game, especially in the second half. Boy, Jamal, that second half opening drive, it was ETN, ETN, ETN. It was 10, 12, 15, throw the ball to him, and it was... It was impressive what he's able to do. He's a talented young kid, and, yeah. and getting him the ball seems to work. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, we definitely love to feed Travis. I mean, he can do so many things, like, at a high level. Obviously, run the ball, catch the ball out the backfield. Yeah. You know, we ran a couple of screen plays, and he just does what he does. You give him the ball in space, and he's just going to make people miss. And he's really slippery. Like, people don't, and people don't realize how strong he is for... Mm -hmm. Had, like he's probably like my high 510 so like he's he he's runs hard he runs really he hard. runs hard between the tackles which surprised me quite frankly when i first saw him last year because the way he was at clemson he's so fast you just yeah. think he'd get outside and go but he'll run it right up in there i think there's some hidden stuff going well on the jags offense right now that you is, better find it i found it 22 right. out of 37 drives then on the opponent's side of the field they just okay. got to finish him off all right make an extra play here or there and etn's play yesterday is also a hidden gem maybe going forward to london against the atlanta falcons all right that was the hard part man <laughs> all right good. appreciate you uh we're, we're gonna try to lift this guy up a little bit more because there's we're to feed good karma Dan okay all right all there's right so many good moments from number 39 and this oh, Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars offense and we're gonna find them in London as well we're live at sneakers in Jack's Beach Jags report live live on Fox 30 thanks for hanging out with us <laughs> if you don't execute and you do stuff like that you won't win a game you won't beat anybody and the way we play today it's like we just can't expect to win playing that way now you can't, and it's just the way it goes in the National Football League. This isn't college football. You don't just play your D game and win. I mean, right. the other guys, as they say, get paid. And Houston played a good game. I give them a lot of credit. They kept punching right back yeah. in that second half. I think they scored on four of their five drives in the second half. Houston has won their first game, Jamal, against the Jaguars in each of the last five, I think, or six seasons. It's amazing. It's uncanny how they seem. Certain teams have certain teams' number, yeah. and we thought we exercised it last year when you guys went up there and whacked them 31-3, yeah. but they've gotten us here, and, and they, again, win their first game of the year seemingly against us each year. Yeah. A lot of streaks like that. Actually, you guys have been great at breaking those streaks yeah. over the years. Yeah. So we'll have uh, to put this one on the calendar for next year. I think we got to, yeah, we got to <laughs> we gotta look at this one next year. But, yeah. I mean, Houston, they played well. They, they played well enough to win, obviously. They, yeah. they took some shots on offense. Um, they made some stops on defense. And, you know, hats off to them. Special teams obviously played really good, too. So. Fred Martin, Dan Hicken, along with Jamal Agnew, Jaguars punt return, a wide receiver here on Fox 30. And uh, all right, a lot of negative stuff going on today. Yeah. But we got to bring back some of this good stuff. Good Take karma. us through some of these plays. We're going we're gonna to get you dialed up to give us another one in London, man, when we're across the pond. <laughs> uh, but here you go. Just earlier this year, don't forget, Jamal Agnew had the play that changed the opener. Yep. Yeah. That led to a win. How about this one? I mean, it was, it was kind of a moment in the game where, you know, defense had just got to stop, so we had a little bit of momentum. Um, you know, we needed a play to get us going on offense. We were kind of stalling a little bit. Um, I mean, the gunner, the coverage guy, he was looking for the ball in that clip right there, and I was just like, I'm going to just take it and go. I mean, we had a right return going that way anyway, so I was just like, as long as I get past this number 41, I'm, I'm in the clear. Then D. Will, starting with D. Will right here at the point of attack, made a really smart block not I mean a lot of guys will blow this guy up and you know 10 years 10 years ago this guy would be decleated <laughs> um, DT coming over here Caleb Johnson yeah DT could easily block them in the back right there but he got himself in good position yep let me tight rope the sideline and then I can't let the punter tackle me so I, I gotta make a move <laughs> but and then Chad Muma had a crazy crazy effort right he almost got this guy this wasn't even the guy he was blocking he was just trying to give extra effort get a touchdown block and he almost had it but he was really smart for not blocking him in the back. Yeah, a couple of those. You could have had blocking yeah, the blacks. And, exactly. uh, good discipline there. All right, we take you back to the playoff game. Oh, the good time oh, of January. Time. And, oh, you did it again against the Chargers. Yeah. I mean, we needed a big play right here, too. Yeah. I mean, I think we're down 24 nothing at this point. Um, we just needed to get something going. I mean, obviously, everybody remembers that night. It was uh, 
It was a little grim for a second, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that's a good reminder, right? Yeah, Remember yeah. in that first half, it was it definitely didn't feel good. Right now, maybe on a Monday, it doesn't feel so great. It can change in a hurry yeah. in the National Football. Still, our league. favorite play though is the Arizona yeah. game. Yeah, right? we probably should go Gus Johnson live oh, audio yeah. here, yeah. but uh, <laughs> uh, this is a good one. This goes back to 2021. Yeah, when you're a, down okay. and troubled. Pop this in and watch. Yeah. Yes. It'll I cheer mean, you up. I do that sometimes. <laughs> I do that sometimes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, is that one of your favorite plays, actually, in your career? Most definitely. I think that's one of my favorite plays. Just because, I mean, being a kick returner, you dream of a moment like that. Yeah. You know, I wish they kicked this field goal from midfield. And, you know, I mean, I've seen it. Devin Hester do it. I've seen, like, I've yeah. seen the, obviously, the NFL films highlights of it. So, you know, I've always dreamed of something like that. All right, take us to the Denver game uh, as our next one. We've got a couple of more coming up. Um, and here's, here's another one. You're in finding open space. I think it's just a, not everybody has the skill set to see the real estate out there. Obviously, that's a special specialty of yours. Yeah, I mean, I love doing it. I mean, obviously, I love making big plays like this. Um, I mean, these are some of the most momentum-changing plays right. in the game other than, obviously, you know, like a, a strip sack fumble or like a pick six or something. Um, so, you know, just to have the opportunity to change the momentum of a game, I, I love that feeling. Well, hey, it's not just on punt returns, kick returns, field goal returns. Remember this play on uh, prime time, Cincinnati game? It's down the sideline, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, I remember was a heck this. of a catch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trevor threw a dime right here, though. He threw this over a defender oh. in between me, a defender in the sideline. So, I mean, I just had to catch it. <laughs> I just had to get, get to it in. and catch it. Got to get the feet in. I mean, you know, that's something we, we call that pro feet. So, you know, you got to have a tap slide. You got you to have that in your bag. Uh, it was just a reminder of all the good moments here for Jamal Agnew over the last few years. Been yeah. valuable for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, hey, pop one against the Falcons and change the whole momentum of the season. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hopefully in London. He also had a catch on our drive of the day from Sunday. The drive of the day, driven by your local Ford dealers. Uh, here you go, Dan, down 27 to 10. Jags, here's the one thing I love about the Jags, even when things weren't going well, they can yeah. score in a hurry. They can, and you guys can. I think yeah. you went like two minutes right down the field and got it, got it in the end zone when you got to do it. I almost wonder maybe, and again, why don't we come out and start two-minute drills Everybody loves it. It's Sunday. everybody's answer. It's two what we always drill. say. Hey, but they, they, you look so good when you run it. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean we, we thrive in situations like yeah. that because we got a gunslinger right there at quarterback. Yeah. And, you know, he likes to sling the ball all, all around the field. Obviously, we love to run the ball as a, as a, as a scheme. Sure. But, I mean, those two-minute situations, I feel like 1-6, he, he lives for those because he loves to just call what he wants and, and just let it rip. And you're getting a good rhythm. All right. Uh, go ahead. Real quick. A lot of talk in Jacksonville about play calling, right? You guys just get the plays. You want to execute the plays. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any difference with the play calling at oh, all, right? No. I haven't noticed anything different. I always say as long as Peterson has the, the glasses on and he's yeah. looking at the sheet, I feel like he's very involved I mean, in all, it. Yeah, exactly. All that comes down to is just us executing on the field. I mean, the coaches yeah. could only do so much. We got to go out there and make the plays. If they could go out there and make the plays, you know, I, I think all – I don't know how many coaches we have on offense staff, but they would all go suit up and go do it themselves. Like, yeah. I mean, it comes down to us executing. We're the ones who, they obviously create the game plans. We have to go out there and execute it. So it has nothing to do with play call. Hey, one thought before we hit a break. Uh, you guys were 3-7 and seven last year, and then it all turned. And really the tide of the franchise seemed to turn. How did it change? Like, when, when you look back on that season, what changed for you guys? It was just... The leadership came from within the team, and it didn't come from the coaching staff. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's to get out of a rut like that, three and seven, it's got to come from within. You guys motivating each other, like holding each other accountable, like this isn't good enough. Like looking at how we practice, like this isn't good enough. We got to be better than this. So it, it's got to come from within, and we have we have good vocal leaders who you know are are taking the lead and leading the way. Um, and I feel like we can turn things around pretty quickly. We just got to we gotta hold each other accountable and be consistent. Might have had a lot of that in the building today. The good teams have ownership inside that yeah. locker room, and mm -hmm. the Jacks certainly think they have that. When we come back, we find some positives about Sunday, sunshine and rainbows. Oh, you were all giddy week one. We'll was, see. You'll be yeah. tested a little hey, bit listen, tonight. You were all giddy at the start of the show, so maybe you'll join this thing. Okay. Ah, that's coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about Travis Etienne? I mean, oh, really, terrific. really good. Yeah. And bottom line is he would have had more numbers if the game was closer in the fourth quarter and they could have leaned on him even more. But a great sign.
line that they gave the ball to ETN, and he had a uh, phenomenal afternoon for the Jaguars. Next up on our Sunshine of Rainbows board, tell you what, quietly Evan Ingram just keeps getting it done. I think he was shut out in the first half, no targets, and then had seven catches in the second half. I think Dave. he has 18 catches through three games, if I'm not mistaken, but he's, he's obviously they're getting him the football. Yeah, that's a good sign, and uh, hey... Dan, this is your guy. That's my guy. I want my guy too. I think we got to get Ted Lasso to give you guys yeah. a little inspirational speech, man. I don't. I mean, this guy knows what he's doing. He's one of the great coaches of all time. And let's get Ted when you're over there in England. Is that good? That'd be good with me. I, I'm a big Ted Lasso yeah. fan too. Great show. Yeah. Yeah. With all due respect to Doug, just pull him in the locker room. We got a couple of weeks over there. Yeah. Now, I mean, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about London in a bit, but uh, let's talk about your modeling career. Uh, La what Fof, do we got? Right. I mean, how did this yeah. come about? And uh, you're pretty good at this modeling. Uh, I've been, I'm trying my best. I'm, it's a new it's a new realm for me. So I'm learning the tricks and trades, uh, the different facial expressions and stuff. Wait a minute. Uh, is he modeling? Oh, yeah. Look, we got it. Oh, it's a local company, right? It's a local, uh, got local connected company. with them. Oh, and, uh, my son loves those hats. Yeah. Yeah. They, they probably make the best hats out on the market right now. Um, I mean, you'll see Trevor wearing they it all the time. They got some cool polos, shirts, yeah. some cool shorts. Yeah, yeah they're just yeah, young guy stuff, not for yeah, us. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, it's for, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of, uh, since you're now good on the fashion show stuff, what the heck was Trevor wearing yesterday, and how do you uh, judge Oh, it? I mean, that's that, that, that Gucci and Adidas. You obviously, you know, Trevor's with Team Adidas, so... <laughs> You know, he's got the little Gucci to go with the little bling. I didn't see what shoes he was wearing, but, I mean, Trevor, Trevor puts it on. You see him put on the suits. He's looking really clean, so. That almost. That's a LaFave hat, too. The hat's fine. The outfit is almost like a romp -um. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's wearing some pajamas. All right. Like a one-piece. Here's the deal. Does Trevor pick that out, or is it Marissa? Um... I can't answer that one. I'll plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, hey, you got the schedule coming up. What about London? Uh, you, guys, you guys seem to look forward to yeah. going over and play there. And that's part of it, right? It can be a pain or you can embrace it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we, we're out there two weeks this year. And, I mean, we love go, going out there and playing in London. I mean, the, the fans are always rowdy. It's just a different type of atmosphere. I feel like, you know, they cheer at different parts of the game just because, you know, they may not know as much about American football. But, I mean, it's always a great atmosphere out there. Well, the fans go over there. And get drunk at the games, yeah. uh -huh. basically is what they do. Half a pint. Uh huh. What do you think? It kind of looks like you might be with a hat uh -huh. like that. There you go. I'm not sure that's a good look. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hey, listen. That's, I think I got tricked. That's far from LaFave. They said, oh, put this on. <laughs> put this on. Swipe the LaFave on it. <laughs> yeah. Now you a model. Uh, man, Jamal Agnew, go uh, play well over there. Go get some W's. Bring them back and get this place fired up again. Appreciate you hanging out with Thank us. Thank you, Jamal. Appreciate it's always right, a pleasure. Uh, he's going to hang around a little bit longer. We're hanging around until 8 o'clock. A lot more to talk about, including the London trip. Jags really have to go get some work done now in London. Uh, early in the season still, but got to find their way when they play two games against the Falcons and the Bills. We're live, Jags report live until 8 o'clock tonight on Fox 30. We're not really good. Uh, you, you, you watch today. Every, everyone's seen it. Everyone knows what, what, what just happened out there. Uh, we just got to own it. You know, I like about this football team is they do own it. Uh, they said a lot of the right things yesterday in the locker room, not just like that same old stuff, right? right? I mean, they, they confronted it. They knew it was disappointing, and they feel it just like the fans do. Well, that was the best comment by any of the players yesterday because he was dead on, and he said it. You know, we got to own it. We're not good right now, and they got to find a way to get good because they are a good football team, and they have talent on this team, and they got to figure some things out here going forward and play better and then see what happens. At least if you play better, then you, you know, okay, well, you know, now, now let the chips fall where they may, but you can't play like that. Yeah, Jamal Agnew with us here on uh, Jags Report Live. He's signing and taking pictures now with the Jags fans. We do that each and every Monday night. And new this year, we hang out until 8 o'clock. We'll actually get Jamal back into the show in a couple of moments. But London week is here. My bags are almost packed. Have fun. And this is different. This is the first time we're going to experience anything like it. We've actually been for a full week before when yeah. this first started about 10 years ago. And then everybody shifted to the third. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, now it's leave Thursday, come back the following Monday. It's a long trip. It's going to be days. very interesting to see how this shakes out, Dan. Yeah, it is. And it's a, it's a great challenge for this football team. Look, immediately everybody said, well, it's a road game. 
I'd rather play Buffalo in London. But I don't know. Football players are such creatures of habit. And we can ask Jamal about this. But they're such creatures of habit. They like, their, they like to have their schedule. And this certainly goes against the schedule. So, except for the kickers and punters who probably go play golf over there. Yeah, and Weber's already there. Oh, no, not yet. He's actually still at the bank. Uh, <laughs> Action Sports Jacks. Stuart Weber has more on the Jags getting to hit a reset button as they go to London. This season, the Jacksonville Jaguars are 0-2 here at Everbank Stadium. The home record, not good. They have another home game next week, sort of. Wembley Stadium, the venue for that one. Hopefully for the Jaguars, a trip to London is a chance to reset and find something that's been missing this first part of the season. Yeah, I think if we use it the right way, it could be good for us. I don't think that we should need that to get the sense of urgency and to play better and to execute. I don't think that we should need that, but if that's what we need, then it's coming at the right time and, and we're going to take advantage of it. So. Um, we'll see. I mean, I think that I know we're going to respond the right way, but um, yeah, ho hopefully this will be good for us and we'll, we'll respond. Expectations, man, we got to go out there to work. You know, here, there, London, we're going out there to work. It starts tomorrow, it starts tonight. Watch this tape, move forward. We got Atlanta and we got the Buffalo Bills. You know, great challenges for us, uh, but it starts with our preparation. Can't worry about the London trip coming up. We can't, you know, we just got to focus in on on the week at hand and, and um, you know, that, that, that part of it starts with me and making sure that the guys are, you know, hearing that message, you know, loud and clear from me and, and um, I'll make sure that they, they get that message. Of course, a lot of the work for that upcoming London game will happen right here in Jacksonville. The Jaguars don't leave till Thursday night, arriving in London on Friday morning. At Everbank Stadium, Stuart Weber, Action Sports Jacks. Your keys to the game, sponsored by Greenway Kia. Well, here we go, Dan. Uh, the offensive line has to play better. It kind of yeah. starts there, right? Get everybody back in sync. Yeah. You want to be on time with all the play calls. You do. It has not. The offensive line has not played well. We all know that. Cam Robinson will be back for the second game in London. They'll put him into the lineup. So they've got some tinkering and some decisions to make, though, this week. There might be some changes along the line. We shall wait and see. But whoever is playing out there must play better. Yeah, back to the basics basically means what Doug Peterson, Trevor, Jamal just said, get out of your own way. Yeah. Just play the game of football, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I think that then leads into the next one. Sure. This is a player's league, and teams that win make plays to win the football game. Absolutely. The Jags are leaving way too many plays out there. Well, they are. And again, one of the things that Jamal talked with us about tonight, and it's a word that you hear over and over again with this Jaguar football team, is execution. Right, And they just are not executing at the level that they did one season ago. They've got to find a way. But it's got to start with, you know, you got to almost wipe the slate clean, play by play by play. You know, put a drive together, get some points, start feeling good, and then things can start to avalanche. You sound like such a coach. Eh, you know, hey, new this year on Jags Report Live, we bring our guests back in for a couple of moments, and Jamal Agnew signing some autographs and taking pictures. And, you know, one of the cool things, Jamal, you've been around here now three years, you guys have really connected with this fan base, and I think last year especially, this football team connected with what Duval is all about. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. You know, we love the fans and the support you guys give us. I mean, this city's amazing. I mean, you know, the, you know some of the cheers in the uh, crowd were a little different this week. Um, I mean, we deserved it. So, um, you know, we got to put a better product out there on the field for you guys. Um, you know, we're a way better team than what we're putting on film right now. And we, we know that. We believe that in our hearts. And, you know, we're going to turn this thing around. I mean, it's a long season. we got 14, 14 games left. So, you know. Jamal, one got, thing. One thing for me, uh, you're off to London, 10 days over there. You guys are creatures of habit. You like your schedule, you know, uh, uh, athlete, professional athletes. Are, what are your thoughts about going over there and playing back-to-back uh, uh, -back games? I mean, these are, these are big games for us. I mean, obviously because yeah. it's the next one. But, I mean, I mean these are, we got a big fan base out there in London as well. So, you know, we got to go out there, you know, handle business, do what we do, and, you know, execute at the fullest. Hey, Jamal, you have a good autograph or what? Is it pretty neat? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty scribble scrabble, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't matter what it looks like. Get it. Uh, Jamal, appreciate you joining us, man. Thank you, Jamal. Thanks no for problem. hanging out with the fans oh. as well. Uh, Jamal and his girlfriend Marina here tonight at Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Brent Martin, no Dan Hicken, we're not done yet. We got you until 8 o'clock and we talk more about the Jags, including a Celtics jersey at Everbank Stadium. Oh, what are we doing? You lost fam segment. Marcel Robinson's got that coming up next. <laughs> He's a 
thinking we're going to cruise to the AFC South Championship are over. So the post-game show continues with me now, which is probably a bad thing. Get a shot of them, Stuart. That is effort. We had none of that. Our guy, he does a, he goes like this. He goes, he does a, he goes like this. He goes like this. I would like to take this microphone and hurl it at this at this camera. What is what is this word right? What is this called right here? The lens. I would probably miss the lens and knock out Stuart Weber's front teeth. Not going to do that, but I want to. Uh, it's a mess after losses on uh, our Jaguars postgame show. You can watch that each and every Sunday, win or lose, on uh, Action News Jack's Facebook page. Hey, now. Oh, whoa. How hey about this? Now. Can you handle the jalapenos, Dan? Oh, Hicken? yeah. I need some food at the bar over here. We got our What's on the Menu segment. Can I um, eat while we do no, this? Wait, no? one other thing. Dan was a little jealous of, uh, you know, yours truly yeah. just being on the reserved seat. Yeah, so right. what do we do? We got a little Dan Hicken on here Hi. now. How about that? And my friend. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I didn't do any of it, by the way. Well, they, those they, are good. They made me do it. Uh, this does look fantastic. Have one. All right, don't talk with your mouth I'm full. I'm sorry. What is on our menu today? Well, the Jags did get booed. Jabal Agnew said that. Yeah. A little deflation here in the River City. 0-2 yeah. at home with another home game coming up in London Sunday. You know... As fans, we and you heard me, and I mean that's the emotion that, that that I think we all feel. But you got Kansas City at home, and there was so much put into it, and then it doesn't turn out right. And you're like, all right, well we're back home again. We got a divisional opponent. Let's get the two and zero in the division. We'll be, and then that thing falls apart, and it just you know snowballs. Not to mention it's a thousand degrees outside, yeah. and everybody's already you know angry, and so it's tough, man. It's tough. And here's the deal. The key to the playoffs, in my opinion, division and home games. You've got to take care of business. You don't right. have to be perfect. You just right. have to take care of business. So the Jags are a little behind now, mm -hmm. at least on the home schedule front. Next up, speaking of behind, this rookie class. The Jags nailed it in 2021. Right. They had some nice finds last year as right. well. Right. But so far, this rookie class, I'm not sure they're giving them enough. I don't know if they needed to do a whole heck of a lot, but it just doesn't feel like enough. Well, I feel like if you're going to draft those guys up high, and they did, they drafted a tight end, they drafted a running back in the second and third rounds you got to use them a little bit more right those are important spots in the draft and the Jags are not getting a lot out of the draft class don't know who reasons why don't know it's so early so you don't want to overreact but you know then you start what we do is we go back and look at the draft and we play the game of well they could have moved remember they moved up and down the board yeah, to get did. guys so it's interesting to see and we'll have more on it as the season progresses but I need more from Britton Strange and Tank Bigsby. Are they weapons or not? Let's find out. And Anton Harrison, I thought he played better, played better. yesterday, yeah. but still, what is he going to be? It's still kind of an unwritten story. Right. The offensive line is a bit of an unwritten story, and it's a problem in Jacksonville at the moment. I think there are things you can do about the offensive line. First of all, you can run the ball. ETN did a better job of that. You can scheme around the offensive line, and I do think Trevor Lawrence helps the offensive line because of his mobility, yes. but they've got to be better. They've got to be better, and listen, uh, um, you know, you got Tyler Shatley as a swing guy, and he's not playing right now. He might be playing this Sunday. I don't know. I think they got to, again, they got to look at everything. That's what Doug Peterson said, and they're not getting enough out of the offensive line. I thought they were much better last year. Trevor only got sacked 29 times last year. Uh, ETN had over 1,000 yards rushing, but the analytics tell us that they're not playing particularly well right now. And so do your eyes if you uh, watch it. Yeah, I got a, had a chance to catch up with Anton Harrison, the rookie, yesterday after the game. Definitely tough losing games we know we should get. Um, we know who we have in the room. We just got to come out and execute, do what we do all week, and come out on Sundays and do what we do and win the game. Are you getting closer to, to figuring it out offensive line-wise? Is it going to still take a little bit of time? Does it just take time? Definitely saying it's our first few games as a five, uh, playing all together, full speed, things like that. So obviously it's going to take time, but we're definitely getting close. We're definitely getting to the line we know we can be and to show it on Sundays. All right, here's a look at the nachos here at Sneakers. The only thing I want to know is, hope you're buying them. I got it. Or the station is. I got or it. Or somebody, Jamal, maybe. Mm. Maybe he's buying them. Uh, this is a segment that we do uh, each and every week. I like this segment. When we go segment. to the home games and we find other jerseys other than oh. Jags and the opponents. Okay. Yeah, you like this segment. Yes. Well, Marcel Robinson likes this segment. It's called You Lost Fam. 
Win, lose, or draw, thousands of fans show up to the bank on game day, but believe it or not, everyone isn't there to cheer on the Jags, at least with their attire. They say, come as you are, right? It's time for You Lost Fam. All right, so nice little family here. Hey, kudos to them for not wearing active players, but I gotta say, this is a wide assortment of You Lost Fam. How about buy one, get two free? All right, so I get it. The Texans are from Houston, but you can't wear baseball jerseys to a football game, especially, especially not that one. The only thing worse than a baseball jersey in a football stadium might be a basketball jersey in a football stadium. Shout out to the Boston Celtics. And no, that 36 does not belong to Marcus Smart, the former Celtic. That belongs to another former Celtic, Shaquille O'Neal. I didn't even know they had those on the shelves anywhere. The first time I've seen one in person, and it shouldn't have been here. Now, we may have to give the folks a break for a couple of weeks as the Jaguars head across the pond to London. Every team will be likely represented as usual, but I can all but guarantee that we won't see any baseball jerseys over there. But then again, who really knows? In the studio, Marcel Robinson, Action Sports Jax. Hey, the Jags defense had played well for the first couple of games. Not the case on Sunday. Right. We'll update some of the numbers, what went wrong with a deep dive on the defense when we come back. We got the nachos, Dan. Oh. Dive in, baby. I am. We'll be, we'll be here until 9 o'clock watching some football oh, and eating yeah. nachos. Sneakers in Jack's Beach. Well, here's a look at the wall that says it all. And the defense has been really good the first couple of games, but not really on this day. I mean, yeah. the third down conversions, 9 of 15 for the Houston Texans, right? There's one thing that stands out, though, and that's the fact, in all honesty and, and keeping it real, they didn't get any sacks on a team that was missing four of their starters on the offensive line. And C.J. Stroud had been sacked 11 times going into the game. That, that just can't happen. You've got to, they've got to find ways. And if the front four can't get home, then they've got to come up with some blitzing stuff. And they tried that, and then they got burned for a touchdown. So it's a tough spot, but it's one. The defense had played sound football the first couple weeks, and were a big reason why we won the game and we're in the second game. But yesterday, they were part of, the, part of the problem. It's been a huge narrative the entire offseason. Did the Jags do enough to get the pass rush going? Right. As of now or yesterday, it doesn't appear to be the case. It's going to be up to guys like Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen. Maybe DeWan Smoot comes back soon to really boost that defensive and front. I'll just say this again as we, as we look at things. There's not as many street free agents, but there's still a few guys out there, right? Carlos Dunlap's out there. He got four sacks last year, but before that, eight, nine, nine, eight. I mean... His veteran experience, to me, adds more than what we have now. They've got money if they want to make a trade right. for a big name, maybe like a Chase Young or somebody like that. Yep. Uh, at least they have a guy that can tackle very well. Oh, yeah. Your Tackle Tracker, sponsored by IHRS, tackling hair loss. I'll tell you what, this guy is fantastic. Foye Aluakin, I mean, is as solid as they come. You see 23 all over the field, Dan, 14 tackles. Sure tackler. Did a good job pretty much against the run in part because of Aluakin. And now he's got 37 on the season. He's led the league in tackles the last two years. And a couple things that I love about the guy. First off, he's a great leader, right? And you guys had said yesterday, he sat in the locker room long after everything was done in his uniform just trying to, and talking to guys, trying to figure things out. He knows that they're better than they're playing, and, and so if anyone can help change things, it'll be Foyer. We've heard two of the most vocal people the last couple of days in the Jags locker room, Trevor Lawrence and Foyer Aluakin. When we come back, well, the Jags didn't do so well, but what about the dog? What about the dog? Uh, I'm about tired of this how dog. How about Aspen? I'm Aspen's about tired gonna get Aspen. one right sooner or later. We're back to finish it up on Jags Report Live. Good to have you out each and every Monday. Again, David Goward next week joins us on the show. I'll be in London. So from Jacksonville to London. Kaylee! Hey, what's up? Kaylee and Caitlin, how we doing? Kaylee! On Fox 30. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Sneakers here in Jacksonville. Chug, Beach. chug, uh, chug! I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, drink after the win or the loss. Welcome back, Brent Martin, Dan Hicken. Thanks again to Jamal Agnew for joining us in the first half hour. We're an hour now on Monday nights here on Fox 30. And, well, as you say, Dan, it's time for Aspen, which means... What about the dog? What about the dog? What about the dog? It's time for Ask Aspen. Sponsored by Subaru of Jacksonville on Atlantic. The right choice for your next vehicle. Hey, 
you gonna do well this week? Are we gonna make up for it? You are? You're gonna get it right? You are? You're gonna get it right? All right, here we go. All right, Aspen. Make your pick. Go! No, he didn't. Aspen uh, hangs out with us so much that I thought maybe she stole some candy out of my drawer <laughs> and my desk. Uh, <laughs> oh, for three, though, Aspen. Come on. We almost had the 300 passing yards. Yeah, he was Trevor. close. He, he was, was pretty close. close to it. Uh, hey, don't forget. Can we to do check Jags out? will get a win and set up the dog and just get the W and get, <laughs> yeah, get maybe one, maybe please. Uh, don't forget Jags Social, our newest show with Action Sports Jacks with Olivia Tassley and Chandler Morgan, 730 on Fridays on Fox 30. I hear it's where, a blockbuster. It is. That's where Aspen yeah. makes the picks, and yeah. we tell you how Aspen did on Mondays. All right, here's the deal, man. We go Thursday to London. Jags have to get a split. At, yes, least. at least. I believe they have to be 3-3 three and three after the Indianapolis game. I'd feel comfortable at this point if the Jags are 3-3. Three and three. I would, too, and they have a good success with Indy here uh, in Jacksonville. So if they can find a way to win that game and then go one step further, they're at New Orleans, at Pittsburgh, at the bye, 4-4, four and four, they'd be fine. Yeah, and, and listen, they got to get the offense going. I, I continue to say, I said it to Jamal earlier tonight, the identity of the football team is being able to go up and down the field and score. The Jags do have some metrics that say they're better than the results. They have no three and outs this, this Sunday. Wow. They only had two last Sunday, but they just can't get from like the 40-yard line into the end zone, yeah, yeah. and they're just not scoring enough points. So i got to believe that changes. I've got confidence that changes. 22nd in points, under 20 points a game, not good enough. Yeah, not good enough. And, hey, here's the big deal. Calvin Ridley can be a star for this team. He's got to play better for sure. than he's played the last couple of weeks. And, uh, well, I guess that goes for probably most folks. All of them, yeah. Uh, Trevor seems like he's playing pretty well. Ingram seems like he's playing pretty well. ETN seems like he's playing pretty well. Outside of that, everybody could probably lift their game. Maybe walk a little, too. He's done a pretty nice job. Yeah, he's job. done a nice job. All right, that's it for Sneakers in Jack's Beach here on a Monday night. Again, David Garrard next week with Dan. I'll be in London. You can watch the game on Fox 30. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a good week. Hope we made you feel better. Don't worry. It'll turn around. Yeah. In Jacksonville.